Hey friends, I'm Daniel Nesbitt, and in this episode we are going to be exploring Robofont. Now, if you've been following along in kind of my series here a little bit, I had just got done in our last episode talking about font self, particularly how it relates uh, mostly to those who are getting started in type design or somebody who needs to effectively very quickly uh, put together a typeface without much fuss or much hassle. Um, and maybe you don't have uh, typeface design software on your computer, you've got something like Illustrator that's available to you, and so you're just kind of rolling with what you've got. Now, on the opposite end of that spectrum, on the very opposite end of that spectrum, is what we have on the screen here, which is Robofont. Now, to start, Robofont is quite a bit more expensive than, um, than Font Self, and it's actually a little bit more expensive than Glyphs. And really, if I were to put it on a hierarchy, I would say that Robofont is somewhere a little past Glyphs in terms of the amount of flexibility that you have with the app. Um, one unique thing about Robofont is that it really prides itself on uh, running on Python, a scripting language, and it affords you the opportunity to go through and really dive super deep into the typeface design process. Unlike Glyphs, it's not so much of a turnkey solution. It's going to have a lot of things built in right away for you. Uh, and one of the first things that I'm going to point out here is it actually doesn't even come with a lot of the tools that you see up on the screen here. Uh, namely, I had to go through and download the shape tool, uh, and I also included Speedpunk, just something that I prefer to have uh, as, I, as I go through and... Um, and work through curved shapes and whatnot. Um, this does have uh, an extension called Mechanic 2 installed here, where I'm able to go through and uh, and add and remove different extensions and whatnot. And uh, like I said, as you can see, there's a lot of different things here that you're able to uh, go through and add uh, to Robofont. I'm not even sure if this totally covers the entire spectrum. Um, but it does seem to pride itself on this idea that uh, if you want to do something in Robofont, there's probably an extension for it. So to give you a quick overview of the interface before we start jumping in here, there are some uh, obviously different settings here from Glyphs if you're used to that series that you followed along with me. Um, but I'm going to start up at the top here and you'll notice that I've got a few buttons. Uh, the first one, like I said, uh, you know, with the Python stuff going on is it does have a features tab here. Now, as I go through this, I should be uh, clear that I really didn't have a chance to dive through a lot of these. So I'm just kind of pointing this out just more as they exist. And if you're interested uh, or if you work with lifts, you probably have uh, taken a deeper dive than I have into this kind of stuff. So um, I know you can do some coding stuff here, but not something that I've touched on. But again, this is really where I think the power and flexibility from uh, Robofont comes into play. Next up, we've got a font menu, or a font info menu, I should say, and very similar to what you've seen in Glyphs before, where you can go through and you can add things like your family name, the style name, uh, the dimensions of your typeface, uh, any legal, copyright, trademark, license information, and the like. Um, pretty standard stuff for a uh, typeface. You also get into different things as well with things like OpenType, PostScript, WOFF, um, miscellaneous options and whatnot. Again, like I said, this tends to be some really advanced software, so there's a lot of uh, switches and knobs and buttons and, and what have you uh, that you can kind of take a deep dive into. If I go back to the font tab here, there's a couple other options as well. Uh, kerning and groups. Similar to uh, glyphs, you can do things like kerning pairs and kerning groups, and that's where both of these windows come into play. Uh, again, with this typeface, I never really did any kerning, uh, at least up to this point, so I don't have anything here to show you. Um, I did go through and set up a group, though, a kerning group, um, just as I was kind of playing around with some things. But this is just kind of a way, similar to Glyphs, that you can go through and just keep tabs on, uh, on how you're using these things. This main white window here is where you'll actually go through and design your type. And I'm just going to pop open one of my letters here, the uh, the lowercase h, so you can kind of see how that works. Again, pretty similar stuff to glyphs, uh, where you've got your different lines for your ascender, your cap height, x height, baseline, and uh, I guess it's a little further down, but the descender is way down there as well. Um, you can also go through these blue lines here and add guides as well, which can be very helpful if you're trying to keep things like overshoots uh, in check with each other. Um, obviously, you probably figured out on the left-hand side, we've got all of the characters that are in this particular typeface. 
And for this one, for this class, um, I really didn't go through and, and do a full typeset or anything like that. I primarily focused on just a Latin alphabet. Uh, I didn't get into anything like weights or italicizing it or anything of that nature. But uh, if I go through and scroll here, you can see that, that I've, I've got all of these options available to me. Off to the right-hand side, um, a lot of these things are going to be very similar to glyphs. Uh, typically in glyphs along the bottom, you've got that little box there that tells you what character you're on. It has the Unicode, the width, uh, a few other metrics. It also has got the side bearings, and that's what you'll find up here. Um, and we'll go through this a little bit more in detail as I draw this shape out. This does give you a live preview as you go, which is pretty handy. You can see how your letter's shaping up or if anything's not looking correct. Next, you've got the layers here, and I've got a few set up by default. I've got a foreground and a background, and then a template layer. One thing that I really don't, unfortunately, have handy here, but um, if you do decide to uh, draw your type out on paper, for example, and then either scan it in or take a photo, uh, RoboFont allows you, just like glyphs, to drag that into the background to kind of serve as a reference point for when you draw. One of the things that I really like about this template feature is, uh, or the image import feature, I should say, is that it allows you to set uh, the baseline, the X height, and the, uh, I think it's the cap height uh, of your letter. So it will actually automatically size and make sure those different points uh, are sized in the, the right place for you uh, when it places the image. So it's a pretty powerful and neat little tool that I really came to enjoy while I was taking the class. Uh, and then last in the corner here, we've got a little transform uh, area. Again, similar again to the right-hand side of glyphs, where you can do things like moving scale, rotate, skewing, and uh, I've also got a snap feature there. And then last to round the window out, we've got a little preview dock down here. Uh, one of the things that I had learned in this class, and, and you may have noticed that I started to apply this at the end of the Designing a Sans Serif uh, series, was talking about how we shouldn't be drawing letters on a one-by-one -one basis, that we should actually start drawing them as words, as soon, or I guess in the context of words, as soon as we can. And one of the things that I really appreciated about RoboFont was that you can actually go through and uh, create strings. So in this case, um, you know, whether it's spacing, whether it's words, uh, as you draw this updates, which is really, really handy. And um, just doing a, a quick example there, an extreme example so you can see. Um, and that's really nice if you're trying to tweak something or just uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you're worried about spacing, maybe you're just making sure that you're keeping an even uh, rhythm or consistency through your typeface. And um, as I was doing this typeface, this was actually super handy. Um, it also allows for a wild card character with the slash and the question mark there. So you're able to see um, these update in real time. So if I jumped over to the C, for example, you'll see that it automatically updates. I don't have to keep going back and updating my string, which was really helpful uh, during my process, or my design process, I should say. So um, I guess the other thing that I wanted to do is just do a quick demo of how to draw in RoboFont. And I think what you'll find is that this is actually pretty similar to how things work in glyphs. So for the sake of this uh, episode, I'm just going to go through and we're going to pretend that that H never existed. So I'm just going to go through and delete that. Uh, now, like I said, um, the shape tool that I have here only draws... Um, squares and circles, and this was one that I added in. I haven't taken time to look if there's any more options or not, but um, but this one honestly did everything it needed to when I was in class. So I'll go through and we'll just draw a very simple square there and we're off to the races. Uh, one thing I will mention as I start going through this is the shortcuts in RoboFont are different than glyphs. So as I'm going through and doing some of these uh, uh, things, I may mess up from time to time. I know there's plugins out there that do, uh, I think, remap your keyboard if you have a preference for either RoboFont shortcuts or Glyph shortcuts. Um, I just haven't used that yet. One of the other nice features that I like about RoboFont is you'll notice when I pasted over uh, that it made a blue outline here. And uh, if I move that shape, that really just meant that I had two overlapping shapes there. And uh, I tend to be a messy designer sometimes, and that's been really helpful for me 
as I was going through and, and designing these letters. Um, the other nice thing I like is if I bump this uh, one unit I just did to the right here, um, if points don't line up by one unit in one direction or the other, that line also turns blue. It's just something that I really enjoyed having to just make sure that everything was staying consistent and uh, that, that my my lines were always 90 degree corners where I needed them to be and that I wasn't bumping something one way or the other and, and maybe, uh, you know, end up chasing my tail and, and having an issue with, with that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that I do like about RoboFont is the measure tools. So I'm just going to go through here and draw a line across. And I use this with the, the measure tool up here. And what's cool about it is that it stays on your screen persistent. So I went back to my, my pointer here. Um, and I'm just, I'm starting to move these shapes around, just selecting and uh, and bumping shapes where I need them to. Uh, I know that my my line width here for vertical lines is, is 90 points, so that's what I'm going to uh, do here. Um, but what's nice is that that stays persistent. The other th cool thing too is I can actually draw multiple lines as well. So if I've got a horizontal shape here, which I'm going to be drawing in a moment, and I know I need to keep that at a certain um, size, that these stay persistent uh, on the screen, which is really actually a lot handier than I thought, um, at least when I started, I should say. So we're going to go through and we're just going to draw some points here. And this is exactly how I would start in glyphs if I was doing that. Now I drew this backwards on purpose because I wanted to also feature uh, or show you the uh, right click menu. Uh, what's really cool is it's actually pretty comprehensive, and um, as a quick shortcut, I'm able to go through and reverse my shape there, so it automatically uh, stops knocking out the pieces here. Um, now, each of my shapes here are running counterclockwise, which is super helpful. And then to get the handles, um, you can just go through, and uh, I'm holding down the Option key on my keyboard and just clicking each of these, so it creates my Bezier handles. And then holding the shift key down, I'm able to take these and just drag them out. And as always, best practice is to keep these in 90 degree increments as much as you can. So we're just gonna go through and do that and pop everybody in the right direction. So now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of start bumping these around so that they, they fit um, into these different pieces here. We'll get this a little bit nicer there. So at this point, I'm just going to start making sure that these are starting to be somewhat um, just just a nice curve. I'm I'm not going to be too particular yet about about um, how well that curve is drawn, but but just to start getting an idea and a feel for how things are going to go. So the other thing that I know too about my uh, my type here is that the the curve here needs to be 75. So I'm just going to bump that in like that, and then I'm also going to just kind of round these out a little bit. Actually, I probably could bring this whole thing down some too. And similar to glyphs as well, I'm actually going to do this probably here. Um, if I do uh, hold down the option and then just use my arrow key to bump things around, it keeps my uh, control handle in place and then just bumps around the point, uh, which is really handy for getting smooth curves. Um, so there are things that do carry over, which is nice to know. Uh, now again, I'm not going to go through and make this extremely pretty and, uh, you know, maybe for another day we'll, we'll get into more technical details as far as, as how this looks, but um, but there we go, just kind of a simple H there. And actually, I'm going to really take a look at this again here. I'm going to try and draw through the thickest, most horizontal part of that, um, which looks like I was about three points off, which is fine. There we go. So there we go, an H in RoboFont. And uh, as you can see, if you were watching down at the bottom here, that was updating as we went. If I scroll back up to the side here now, we've uh, now that we've got the shape, we've got the side bearings. And uh, if you've followed along in past episodes, you'll know that, that things kind of relate from each other. So in this case, I have 80 
and 77 on the left and the right respectively of the lowercase n and I'd like to apply that to the H here. Now there's a few different ways I can do that. Number one, I can actually hover over where the uh, the background changes colors here and it creates a little handle. And if I drag this back and forth, I can adjust my side bearings, you'll see up here, um, kind of in a rough way. They're not really elegant. I could go through and type them in, which is fine. That works as well. Um, but for the sake of having some fun, I'm going to mess these up a little, again, a little bit again and then show you a neat trick. So in glyphs, you'll recall that if I did uh, a parentheses and then within there did an equals n, for example, um, that that would automatically tie the side bearings of the n to the h. I can do something similar in RoboFont, but I don't need the parentheses. I can just type in equals n and I automatically bring those in. So there are handy little tips and tricks like that, and it's kind of nice if you do jump back and forth between something like uh, RoboFont and Glyphs, uh, just to have a little bit of that familiarity there as you go back and forth that maybe you're not learning from scratch or you've got some of these familiar things that you've picked up in one program that you can apply to the other. Uh, again, like I said before, there are a myriad of extensions in RoboFont, and as you uh, further along with your typeface design uh, career or just your path, uh, you start to learn a little bit more about how you work and different things that you may or may not uh, want to have as part of your workflow, or maybe there's some details that you want to include in your typeface that might be a little bit more advanced than something like font self or glyphs, maybe having a little bit of difficulty with. Um, RoboFont is a great option for that, and I know too that a number of uh, professional typeface design studios actually use RoboFont, so if you're looking at pursuing type design as a career, um, this might be uh, one of those things that you might want to take a look at. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a little bit more expensive. Um, to my knowledge, I don't have a number off the top of my head. I do know this is obviously more expensive than FontSelf by a large amount. Um, I also know that this is a bit more expensive than Glyphs as well, so that could factor into uh, how available this app is to you, but at the very least I wanted to just make everybody aware of what's out there, and that's really the whole goal behind this. Um, part of my excitement for typeface design is to show that you don't always need to use the exact same apps that I do, or maybe somebody that you look up to. There's a variety of different ways to design type. I can't really say that any any one way is wrong. Um, there's different ways to do things, and it all depends on what's available to you, uh, what's comfortable for you, what fits within your workflow, and so forth. And so, hopefully this little preview of RoboFont gives you a, a little bit of insight and maybe some understanding into what this can do. Um, and at the very least, you know, maybe you learned something from here today that you might be able to take back and apply to the apps that you are using. Uh, so with that, if you enjoyed this episode, please, by all means, hit the uh, like button on this episode. Every one of those helps. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Usually, almost every Friday, uh, I try to release a new video. And um, if you have played around with Glyphs, or if you're interested, or uh, sorry, RoboFont, uh, or if you're... Um, Maybe you're a regular user of RoboFont, or maybe you're just curious about it. Um, hit up the comment section below and uh, let me know what you think. I'm always curious to hear how people are getting on with different software like this. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.